Okay, so we're here in Austin. We're testing out the Robo Taxi. We've taken a few test rides, but now we have some actual meetings to get to. So we're going to take it just like we're using Uber um, and right. share some of our reactions and talk about research. Time to call a Robo Taxi to Capital Factory. Looks like we're gonna have a Model Y here in 12 minutes. Oh, is this the Robo Taxi? All right, so our Robo Taxi is here. Hey, how are you? You gotta fasten your seatbelt. I know, for safety first. Safety first. Do you wanna do us the honors and click start, Sam? I'd love to. Boop. Boom. All right, so we're going to meet Farzad. This is a, it's a this pretty is short a, ride. It's five, five minutes, but. A real world use case. <laughs> um, you can see here, the wheel and the pedals. Yeah, what's your overall reaction so far, Sam? This isn't our first ride, we're, we're seasoned vets now. Yeah, I mean, it's just great. It works, number one. It works. Number two, it's almost uneventful because it works well. I mean, the biggest perceived experience that I've had so far is that it takes a little bit longer because there's right. not a ton of cars on the road yet. It's early access, so you have to wait. And, and I mean, it's like all of that flips when Tesla scales. They will have the most ride liquidity at the lowest price. Yeah. According to our research, one day's worth of production could ultimately like remove Uber from Austin. One day's worth of production is what? How many cars? Close to 5,000 cars. Yeah. How many Waymo's are here? A few hundred? That's, I, I don't know. So Waymo, they've said 1,500 plus in their fleet, hoping to add 2,000 through the end of next year. So the ability to ramp up will be high once Tesla gets comfortable with the safety, gets exactly. a few. And if 7,000 miles under the belt now, maybe they need 100,000 to take a driver out. Right, and, right. you know, you can get more miles fast, more quickly by adding, adding more vehicles. cars. Right. Can you see the future being all autonomous or you're like, what's, what's your gut reaction? I, I can totally picture it. Like, it's just a question of when and how quickly. The thing that's nice about the way that we do research and invest is that we're thinking on a five-year time horizon. Mm -hmm. And seeing robo taxis from two different companies on the road today in the US like and seeing them scale i'm extremely confident that we're going to have a autonomous future in the next 5 years and shout out to all the uh, safety people in the front seat who have to listen to us i know and others <laughs> <laughs> and they're not even allowed to smile oh this is wow, this, this is, is an all right are we going to go in a parking garage or are we going to go through the valet drive through valet drive through nice very impressive I actually would have guessed that went wrong, but... Perfect. Sweet. We made it. Thank you very much, sir. Yo. Hey, hey. Hey. What's up, brother? How's How it going? Up, man? Good to see you Great again. to see you. Have you guys taken any Waymos here? No. Oh, I've yeah. taken Waymos in SF, but not yeah. not here yet. Yeah. So, does my, does my, like... So, did we talk about y'all's comparison with Waymo and, and RoboTaxi? Like, did you guys find that it is smoother, that it is a better ride, or do you think it's that differentiated? My take, like my experience in SF was, yeah. is you know, I, I experienced no issues. Okay. We were talking to a Uber driver here who had taken some Waymos here. He he had the same observation as you, which was there were more weird things happening with Waymo. Yeah. Um, so obviously anecdotal, but right. you know, whose is this one? I mean, this is me. All right, guys. I will see you there. Okay. How are you? Let's do it. through a driver's ed class, how hard is it to drive? It's pretty easy. If autonomous can do other things generally, shouldn't it be able to learn to drive pretty easily? It's a pretty simple task. Um, I don't know if it's that simple. Right now, and I feel like this is one of those things that in my mind is crazy that we've just accepted as the status quo, right? It's like last year there's 40,000 deaths from traffic incidents. So it's like, is it easy? That's like a, more than in a lot of wars that the US fights. And we just say, okay, this is worth it because we want to go get coffee at a boutique. And which makes me so much more optimistic and bullish that the future is autonomous, right? It's like, it's not can it reach human level? It will certainly reach human level. In fact, I would argue if you had FSD running on all cars, it would be safer. Human as a benchmark is the wrong benchmark. Well, what's the right benchmark? Well, it's, it's just like, we're going to far exceed human levels. I don't think these cars compete long-term on safety 
it's similar to the you know i don't think people i mean maybe with boeing now more so uh there's more sensitive sensitivity to uh airline safety but i think at the end of the day it's going to come down to price per mile and wait time but we have arrived we have safely arrived. thank you safety driver yes nice work okay, very thank very you. hard work he did up there i saw should i call frank and tell him to call the call the robo taxi Oh, and RoboTax, <laughs> like back in it. Yeah, back. yeah. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's uh, on the move. Uh, in some ways, it's impressive, you know. Definitely impressive. Let's go. Meet them and tell them what just happened. It pulled into the turning lane here, and just like we were saying, it doesn't get skittish anymore. Yeah. It got a little skittish, and yeah. then we put the flashers on and waited for support. I think the support tried to turn it back to the car to let the car finish it. The safety driver asked support to do that. And then support had the safety driver take over. So the safety driver got out and went into the driver's seat and drove me into the parking. Really? So okay. that, was, that was interesting and unexpected. Okay. And you caught it? You caught yes. the camera? Okay, awesome, good. All right, that's, that's yeah. good coverage. Um, all right, so I know it's almost two, so you probably have to go. Yeah. Howdy, howdy, guys. All right. It is, um, it's funny because Uber, when you get it now, it plays over the radio or the, the car audio that please fasten your seatbelts, but in the Robotex, they actually enforce it. <laughs> you can't start your ride until you plug yeah, in your yeah, seatbelts. Gosh. <laughs> get out of the way, Sam. <laughs> well, we know it won't run somebody over. <laughs> Safety test. All right, so the chip in this vehicle, uh, Elon's pre presented the idea that they'll use the spare flops they have for distributed training um, do you think that's going to pose a threat to the existing kind of, call it, um, way in which training is being thought about and built out? So the, I mean, the, the short answer is that you're constrained into how much compute you can put in a single chip, as in how much, uh, how many compute cores, how much memory, and just by physical space and what will fit on a chip and the chips in a server. And as models get bigger, um, they exceed the memory capacity of a single chip or a single server. So you need to distribute your training job over many chips in many servers, in many racks, in many rows throughout a data center. Um, and as you are distributing your load across thousands, tens of thousands of chips, um, the uh, you need to do that to support the training, uh, but it creates latency because you have to have this networking overhead of communicating between all the all the different chips. And if you have to spread it out over you know multiple regions or like let's just say you know hundreds of thousands of cars, um, you have this like inherent latency as the chips need to talk to each other to finish a training job. Got it. And so I think if there was more work they could do, they would do it. But it's already optimized to the point where it's doing the maximum amount of work and the latency just creates more waiting time before you can go to the next step. This is also why actually like there is a difference in compute efficiency in like AI native hyperscalers like CoreWeave that have been building data centers for OpenAI and Meta that are really like pushing the frontier of large cluster training and XAI who's like vertically integrated into it versus um, a startup who doesn't have the experience or a hyperscaler who's used to um, traditional compute because they're used to running uh, almost the opposite pattern in cloud computing, which is many jobs on one chip. This is one job spread across many, many chips. chips yeah. And so there's like efficiencies and optimizations you need to learn. Like how do you let one chip fail? Because these things are running at you know max capacity 24 seven. So whenever you're doing that in hardware, things fail. And so if one chip fails, how do you gracefully let that fail so you can reroute the training job around it without taking off like the whole cluster um, that is running? Um, and that's like, at least what CoreWeave has said, they have learned how to do this very well, whereas their competitors have not. That makes sense. Hey, look, it didn't get stuck in it. When you were being picked up, this thing got, had a hard time navigating. There, yes, I got stuck in an infinite loop. Yes, but, here but we, we made it. Thank nice, you. Nice job, thank you. One, guys. All right, cheers. All right, this is the first experience we had with uh, an actual intervention or a hiccup where a driver had to take over. Uh, what did we learn from this? I mean, I think it's, it shows, right? This is why you do the testing in the early days. This is why, you know, teleoperation is going to be a piece of it. And, you know, this is learning in six months time. It will continue to get even better. 
I mean, if it's anything like the rate of change in LLMs, there's kinks now, but they get worked out very quickly, especially when you have more data in the mix. Definitely, and uh, I, you might notice I had to change shirts because just standing within like a six mile radius of Terry Black's, uh, you reek of, of barbecue. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's our experience uh, after a couple days of testing uh, RoboTaxi in Austin. Um, look forward to coming back and seeing how fast it improves. And, well, uh, then I would say not yeah. looking forward to coming back, looking forward to it coming to us. Yeah, RoboTaxi coming to a city near you soon. So yeah, it was an incredible experience, super excited. I think the future is very clear. Um, obviously, we say that we do tons of research. Uh, encourage other people to look at you know the economics behind all of it and if they want to come down here and uh, try out all the different services and you'll you'll see why we are so confident in our beliefs that's it